Does anger ever control you? Do you have regrets about getting really angry? Have you tried to control your anger, but nothing works? Today, I'm going to explain where anger comes from, and I'm gonna help you navigate your intense anger with greater understanding and intelligence. By the end of this episode, you'll understand the steps you need to take when you feel yourself getting angry, and I promise I'm not gonna tell you to just take deep breaths. This is The Answer to Everything, the podcast where you hear real life counseling sessions followed by information and tips you can use in your life today. My name is Rachel Sievers. I'm a retired psychotherapist and I've logged over 12,000 hours counseling individuals and couples in private practice. I'm bringing the life-changing benefits of counseling to you because I believe everyone deserves access to the tools, knowledge, and compassion that counseling provides. Today, I'm sharing a recent counseling session with John, where he shares a scary event that triggered explosive anger in him. So the portion of the session that we're about to hear was recorded about two years ago. And at that time, I had been seeing John for less than a year. So he was really at the beginning of his growth journey. He's in a completely different place now. He's very emotionally intelligent. For the most part, he doesn't handle anger the same way anymore. But at the time, he was just learning how to handle anger in a way that was more gentle, more productive, better for him. Where John comes from, like his background, his upbringing, his time in the service, the military, it makes sense that he would struggle with explosive anger not slowing down to figure out what he's really feeling. I mean, of course, this is how John deals with emotion. Why would he know anything else? In the portion of the session you're about to hear, notice what happens when I ask John to stay with his fear instead of his anger. Let's take a listen. Hey, how are you doing today? I'm good. How about you? I'm great. So catch me up. What have you been up to since the last time we met? I'm leaning more into my emotions that comes up. And it's really hard. That's one thing that I realize is this might be one of the hardest things I'm ever going to do. Is yeah, yeah. How do you lean into anger when you're getting angry? You right. Know? When you're all like caught in all the claws of anger, you're literally shaking and not breathing properly. And once I caught that, I was like, oh. I'm shaking and I'm not breathing properly. And right. those are the things that's happening when I'm angry. So, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And yeah, I went to the mountains, threw a tantrum, and I threw my phone in the street. Mm-hmm. Was a, a, I was being a big kid throwing a big tantrum. Uh huh. I wish I didn't do it. But at the same time, I was like, there's no point for me to put shame into that situation because it doesn't matter anymore. Like it's done. Yeah, as that's not going to do anything. Adding shame on top of it. So tell me about this tantrum you threw in the snow. <laughs> so the mountain, I was snowboarding mm-hmm. and I fell one time really hard and I hit my head and now my head's hurting. I was like, okay, back to my old friend. Let's go get some gin and tonics and take care of it real quick because I have no aspirin or you know ibuprofen up in the mountains. Okay. Started drinking. We've been snowboarding all day. We haven't. I haven't eaten. Mm-hmm. So my breakfast, lunch, and dinner was gin and tonic. Mm-hmm. Perfect, <laughs> perfect recipe for a good. Yeah, great I've, day. He- I've heard that's really good for you. <laughs> and then I get back to the truck, and the, one of the girls is there. I was like, "Where's Where's my girlfriend?" She then says, "Oh, she got stuck looking for." a glove that we dropped. So now she's, I don't know where she is. She's stuck in the mounds under powder. And I was like, wait, what's going on? It's like, yeah, she's somewhere in the mountain. I don't know where she's at. It snowed really hard that day. So the one person that I trusted in the mountains is now stuck under powder. And then the fear came up. I was like, what if she dies? She's going to die. She's going to die now. I mean, the alcohol didn't help, but that was the thought process. I was like, and the worst part about it is she's going to die for some $20 gloves. Before I know it, I was as mad as I can be. You are mad. I was very angry, yes. Okay. So I put it in. So what we know about anger is that it's a mask that we wear when we're actually sad or scared about something. Yes. So what were you really? I was very scared about her well-being. It was to the point where I didn't put on socks 
<laughs> I put in this vans and I started walking to the entrance of the ski resort and I was just mucking through ice and mud. And then she comes out of nowhere. She's like, hi. I was like, obviously her face was like in distraught. I was like, what happened? And she's like, I don't want to talk about it. Um, she's also very scared. I, I could only imagine how scared she was because if I was in that position, I would be terrified. Mm -hmm. And that fear when I was like, I wasn't thinking anymore. Well, I was thinking maybe too much. I was like, where can I focus this anger on, this fear? And then whoever I looked at was the recipient of that of that emotion. Oh, what'd you do? So while well, they were talking, it's like, I'm so glad you're alive. I was like, I was like, what the fuck? And then I was like, while I was saying this, I threw my phone and it got run over by a car that's passing by twice. Uh -huh. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you for Apple Care. Uh-huh. <laughs> and and they're like, what's going on? Like, she's alive. I was like, yeah, she's alive. But do you guys not realize what could have happened for some $20 gloves? And then I started yelling at everybody. I don't know what I was doing. In my head, I was like, I'm mad right now. So everybody's going to get this anger one way or another. Yeah. And just sitting in my own little pool of hell at that point. And I just kind of closed my eyes. I was like, Your right. own little pool of hell. I love it. And yeah, I was like. Okay, like, go go ahead and atone for your sins. Accept everything that's happening now. Because this is the effect of your actions. So it was very painful. What would have happened if you had just stuck with the fear rather than jumping to anger? What would that have looked like in that situation? I've never thought about that. <laughs> the That bridge from fear to anger was so, it's like two steps away. So it was, I didn't even think about that at all. Right. Maybe instead of stepping into anger, once I saw her and she's fine and alive and walking and I could have gone to it with gratitude that she's alive and she's well. She had, didn't break any limbs. Mm -hmm. Yeah, she gashed her hand. But well, even before that, when you learned she was on the mountain alone and that fear washed over you, you took two steps and went to anger, right? If you hadn't have taken those two steps and you had just sat in the fear, not knowing where she's at, and you just let yourself be afraid. Very vulnerable, right? Yes. Which is why we don't do it. We take those two steps into anger because sitting in the fear is so vulnerable. Like just allow yourself. And I'm not, I'm not even saying this is what you should have done or I'm not even making suggestions. I'm just saying let's explore what it would be like to be so vulnerable to just allow us to stay in fear instead of getting angry. I mean, I'm imagining myself and I probably would have sat down on a curb and my mind would have gone blank and I'd be quivering and crying on the side of the road. Yeah, I would definitely. <laughs> I'd be a mess. Yeah, I would definitely be a mess. I would be hyperventilating something that I do okay. and I'm stuck in fear. And if there's something that I highly dislike is being stuck in fear and uncertainty and mm -hmm. those two combined, it's Ooh. probably like, that's that's the place that I don't know, like walking into, but I don't even like it. <laughs> imagining I know. I know. It. See, anger feels a lot better, doesn't it? Yeah. Anger. It's more powerful. It is. We'll get to my commentary in one second. But before we do, I have a request. If you've ever gotten value from this show and you want me to continue to provide you with the tools, knowledge, and compassion that counseling provides, please rate and review me on Apple or Spotify. Those reviews go a long way in helping me reach more people and they really make my day. So if you're feeling up to it, I would love to see a rating and a review from you. And if you share a screenshot to your own social media audience and tag me at Rachel Severs MS, I'll reserve a spot for you on my next group counseling Zoom call. I'll even share it on on my social media. So if you haven't already, please leave a rating and review. It really does help. Okay, let's get back to my commentary. John is really vulnerable enough to talk about these super ugly, angry moments, which for most of us, we experience from time to time. Some of us experience it more frequently. I do kind of want to talk a little bit of shit on the whole take 10 deep breaths and your anger will go away. I don't know about you, but I've heard so many people over my lifetime say, I tried to do the breathing thing. It just didn't work because you can't breathe yourself out of anger, folks. <laughs> the breath will buy you some time. Breathing when you're angry 
gives you the space and time you need to be curious and really get down to the root of it and figure out what you're actually feeling. But the breathing itself is not what's going to take you into a happy, calm state. Just want to put that out there. Okay. Okay. I'm really excited about this topic because it gives us the opportunity to sort of talk about emotional intelligence 101. This is the real basic stuff. This is where most of our counseling or therapy journeys, they start with this. This is an absolutely necessary part of being an emotionally intelligent person. I mean, you just, you can't be emotionally intelligent until you get this down. Okay, so let's talk about emotional intelligence and what that means. A person who is emotionally intelligent is aware when they experience an emotion. They are able to name the emotion and they are able to care for that emotion. So imagine if you went to the doctor and you were really headachy and your body was hurting and your nose was stuffed up and you had a sore throat. And without even looking at you or running any tests, the doctor just said, here's an ointment, rub it on the temples of your head four times a day. What? <laughs> no, I need you to I need you to look in my throat. I need you to check my ears. I need you to check my temperature. We really need to figure out in what way am I sick so that you can treat me effectively. Maybe I need a pill. Maybe I need a shot. Maybe I just need a good night's sleep. Maybe I need an ointment. I don't know. We have to get specific about what exactly the ailment is before we know how to treat it. And the same thing goes for emotions. You got to know exactly what you're feeling before you know how to take care of it. So it's really about the conscious awareness of what's going on rather than being driven around by impulses and urges from emotions that are happening beneath the surface. You're really on top of it and in tune with what's happening and you're directing the course of your emotions. You know, so if you get really angry and you just start swearing and cursing and throwing things, you're being driven around by your impulses and urges that the anger emotion is creating within you. If you get angry and you stop and you say, whew, I'm feeling angry. What the heck is this about? And you kind of sit with yourself for a minute and be like, you know what? She just embarrassed me so bad. I'm actually really embarrassed right now. Okay, I'm going to go take a walk because I don't want to yell at people. You take a walk, you come back to her and you say, you know what, sister, you really embarrassed me there and kind of hurt my feelings and just wanted to let you know. Okay, that is you being really aware you're in tune with yourself, and you're taking really good care of your emotional state. I want you to notice two really important things here. And the first is when you are emotionally intelligent, it's not that you are not experiencing anger or sadness or embarrassment. It's not that you don't feel negative emotions. The point is not to get rid of them or to never experience them or to somehow squish them down when they happen. That's not being emotionally intelligent. That's a really important factor to keep in mind. The second important factor here is the element of non-judgment. It must be present for you to be an emotionally intelligent person. You cannot be emotionally intelligent if when you experience an emotion, you put yourself down or you berate yourself or shame yourself for having that emotion. So let's say the anger thing. Let's say I come home from work and I get so angry because the house is a complete mess. If I put myself down and say, oh, you're not being patient enough. You're not being loving enough. Look at you. You're such a bad mom or you're such a bad wife because you get angry all the time. Now I'm judging the fact that I'm having an emotion. Now, if I come home from work and the house is a mess and I feel angry and I pause and I say, oh, this is like really getting to me, this mess. What is it about this mess? I just feel like I'm unappreciated. I feel like nobody's seeing all the work that I did before I went to work today and I feel unimportant and looked over and I'm gonna have a talk with my family about this or I'm gonna hire a housekeeper or something, okay? That is you allowing yourself to have an emotion, no judgment, and now you're free to like really dive into it and kind of figure it out and do something with it. So we're not getting rid of emotions, and we are not judging emotions when they come up. We're trying to be curious about them. We're in tune with them. And we take good care of them when they come up. I do want to add a side note that this goes for positive emotions too, not just negative. We have a tendency to kind of focus on the negative stuff because we consider those problems. But it is just as crucial that when we experience positive emotion, we're tuned in with it. We're super curious about it. And we do something with it. 
whether it be just pause with it and soak it up and feel it or you know um i'm going to i'm going to make sure i do this thing every day cuz it just feels so good to me when i do it or i'm feeling really good things about that other person i'm going to go talk to them i'm going to tell them all these good things i'm feeling about them or maybe i'm just going to keep it to myself and just enjoy it whatever whatever it is focusing on positive stuff and being curious and tuned in is like a really really healthy practice to get into but that's kind of a side note Today, we're we're focusing more on anger. I began by saying this is something that you need to get good at if you want to be an emotionally intelligent person. I want to talk about how anger is a secondary emotion. So the first step of emotional intelligence is being really tuned in and curious, okay? The second step is really putting a name to it. Now, what we need to know about specifically anger, anger is a secondary emotion. That means that before anger, there's always a different emotion. There's a primary emotion. So before anger, if you really pause and take a look at things, you will always notice that there's some type of sadness there or some type of fear. And because sadness and fear emotions are so vulnerable and make us feel very weak and small, we jump to anger. I call it putting on an anger mask. We cover up the sadness, we cover up the fear with this anger mask so that we are bigger, we're louder, we are the most powerful person in the situation, I can no longer be hurt. We put on an anger mask so that we are no longer vulnerable, we're bigger, we're louder, our tongue is sharper, we are no longer vulnerable when we are angry. So we feel safer being angry than we do being scared or sad. Most of the time, it's going to happen so fast, you will not even realize that there was an emotion first, and then you jump to anger. You won't even see it happening. It's a split second. Sometimes this is actually a learned behavioral and emotional response from childhood. Many of us saw our caregivers do this, so we sort of absorbed that same behavioral and emotional pattern from our caregivers. For some of us, this is learned that it is really not safe to be sad. It's really not safe to be scared. So we jump to the anger thing and on a very subconscious level, we just realize, oh boy, it feels so much better here. As odd as that sounds, feeling angry feels better than feeling sad or scared. And that's why we do it. So if you're being emotionally intelligent, first of all, you're really tuned into the emotions as they come up and you're curious about them. You're not judging them. Second, when they happen, you're giving yourself a little bit of space to wonder what, where, where is it coming from? What's it about? What, what is it? And when you experience anger, this is the step where you're going to check out that primary emotion. I want to insert here just how normal it is to not know the words to describe your emotion. It is so normal for people to struggle with, what am I feeling? Uh, I don't I don't know. It, it, maybe it's like sad. Maybe I'm angry. Uh, I don't know. So much more normal than you might think. My recommendation for listeners is get yourself a chart or a feelings wheel, something that gives you a list of emotions to read over and choose from in these moments. Don't be too hard on yourself here. Most people don't know all the words for emotions, and that's fine. I have clients who print them off, and they have one in their bedroom and one on their refrigerator, and they keep one in the car and one in their purse. And I have some clients who use it as the wallpaper on their cell phone, or they keep a photo of it in their cell phone. Something that you can access all the time time. Studies have actually shown that simply identifying the emotion with a word relieves the emotion up to 50%. So it that is, I mean, you're already helping yourself just by putting the right word to it, but you'll really help yourself when it comes to the next step, which is caring for it. If you really, really know what you're caring for, you're going to be so much more successful. So my tip is get yourself that chart. You can Google it and you'll get 50 options. They're out there for you. Don't be afraid to use it. It's going to be really helpful for you. When you can get down to really what you're experiencing underneath the anger, it's going to feel more vulnerable there. You might notice that you feel weak or small, but at least you're being real with yourself. 
And then that gives you the opportunity when you do the third step, which is take care of it. It gives you the opportunity to take really good care of it, whether it means going to the other person and saying, hey, that just really scared me, whether it be journaling about your sadness, whether it be going and asking your spouse for a hug, whatever, whatever it is that you need to do, you're going to care for it better if you've really identified what that primary emotion is. You can't take care of anger when there's actually something underneath that. You need to take care of what's underneath that anger, not the anger itself. Just keep in mind that identifying the emotion itself already gets you 50% of the way there. You're already being very emotionally intelligent by not judging yourself, being curious about it, and giving yourself some space and time to really figure out what's going on, to really figure out what emotion you're feeling. So congratulations if you can do that. Good luck to you. This has been the Answer to Everything podcast. Thank you so much for listening, beautiful people. Yeah, yeah.